Welcome back, boys. In this episode, we are going to be going through the skid on this 1990s wide body phaser. Pretty weird. If anyone knows what this kit is, it's got custom body panels and the whole track has been widened. I don't think it's a bender phaser, but if anyone knows what this is, uh, leave a comment below. Um, anyway, this is set up for trail riding because it is a wide body. So its whole goal of widening this thing is to make it handle better. So instead of long tracking this one, I'm gonna keep it a trail sled. In the last episode, we put in a new er, 121 rip saw, so that was pretty easy. Kind of a lot easier than I thought. We're now going to go through the skid, and yeah, it's, it's pretty bad, so let's let's check this out. We're gonna do a Sarah inspection here. Boy. Shouldn't it spin easier than that? All right, try that one. Also crunchy, but at least moving a little. <laughs> All right, now try the front two. That one's really keep, crunchy. Keep moving forward. These ones? Yep. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> this one's really nice and loose. <laughs> yeah, because the bearing is failed. Gone, and this one's not moving. One, two. They're fine. <laughs> one good well, bearing. Well, I mean, I don't know. One good <laughs> bearing on the entire skid. Did so when people say their sleds aren't hitting the right top speed, <laughs> yo, <laughs> that's a lot of drag. Check for crunching in your bearing. <laughs> I did want to show you guys this. This is a factory Phaser ST rail extension. So this is what the factory did to get from a 121 skid to a 136. I also have, for comparison, some SLP extensions, again, to get from 121 to 136, but we're gonna go over that in a different episode. This machine's gonna be staying a trail machine, so we're sticking with the 121. So I think we're just gonna start in the front and work our way back. I've never done one of these before. If anyone sees something I'm doing wrong, please leave a comment below. I just sort of figure stuff out as I go, and you know, so far it's working. Not only are most of my bearings shot, a lot of these wheels are stuck on the shaft. And I don't have a puller right now, so this is what I'm doing. Chunk of two by four, chunk of two by four. Just, uh, you can spread it around the lower wheel, and then I'm just tapping from above. There we go. Almost. <laughs> it's still stuck. So when you install new ones, I'm going to use some anti-seize to make sure the shaft doesn't keep rusting.
Yeah, a little better bearings now, boys. The next thing I need to do is I just want to grease some of these pivots here. I have also put a little bit of anti-seize wherever the springs kind of ride and slide in these guides, just because when I pushed down on this, it kind of went, it was just kind of catching. Once I put a little anti-seize on there, it was a lot smoother motion. All right, so that's about it for putting this skid together. In terms of what I learned, uh, I think it wasn't too bad. I would say for tips and tricks, definitely do one section at a time or it's gonna get really confusing when you have to put this together. The other thing, just random thought here, if you're uh, into building phasers, boys, is I think there's a reason that companies don't use cast aluminum wheels anymore. I think it's weight. Fine with this because it's a trail sled, but if you're trying to build something for high altitude, like a powder toy, maybe a different skid is probably a better idea than redoing one of these. The other tip that I had for you is buy a really nice set of retention ring pliers. These ones are awesome. They're made by Channel Lock. I'll put a link down below. They're about 30 bucks, but what's awesome about them is they have a switch right here. So you can go from uh, external to internal snap rings. All right, if you did learn anything from this video, please leave a like and comment below. So that's about it for the skid, boys. I think we're gonna be putting it in next episode. The other things you might wanna check out is I showed you guys how to pull the carbs and rebuild them. We're gonna be throwing those in next. And then we are going to be installing some tunnel protectors on the bottom of the tunnel here using some old Hyfax and redoing the seat. And then we're taking this thing for a rip. So cheers. Stay tuned.